So I want to talk a little bit about um, this remanufactured battery that I'm installing into the Prius, the Gen 2, 2004 Gen 2 Prius. Uh, so I bought this from Hybrid Battery Depot and um, they shipped it to me with really fast shipping. It was in a container. Uh, I can show you one of those containers in a moment. Um, this, is a, this battery right here is actually the hybrid battery I pulled from the Gen 2 Prius. So this was the factory battery. I don't think it had ever been removed. And um, you can see on this end, the very bottom, you'll see where there's um, a little vent or a little metal area where you can insert the plastic ductwork um, that helps with cooling the battery. You see how straight and kind of aligned that is. Um, I'm going to show you um, the remanufactured battery, the first one they sent me, and the crate um, that it came in just to show you what had happened um, to it. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is the first remanufactured battery I received from Hybrid Battery Depot. And um, you can see the box that it came in. It's a reusable shipping container. The idea is it, it arrives to you, you install the remanufactured battery, and you place your core into this box, zip tie it in, and send it back. And um, that, that's how it's secured inside the box. Is There's some holes cut in the bottom of the box, and you just it runs a zip tie around it. And on the second battery I got, there are two of them around it. But um, when the battery did go through shipping from FedEx, um, it definitely got banged around quite a bit, and um, uh, the, both zip, the, the zip tie was broken um, when I got it, and um, I don't know if you can really see. On this side, it's in pretty good shape, um, but over on this side, you're gonna, I'm going to show you that little vent area where um, I'm supposed to run that um, duct working. You can see it's totally bent up, and it's hard to tell here, but the entire box is distorted. and. Um, you can see over here where I tried to modify and stretch it out, bend it. Everything was really just bent to, uh, just bent completely. And um, I, I actually was only able to get this bolt to bolt down on the battery and then all of the ones on the other side. So both this bolt over here and this one here uh, would not line up. And that's even after a lot of twisting and bending and using pry bar and everything. So this entire battery um, the box has been distorted through just getting banged around and shipping um, to where it was really just not even installable. Um, I, I called Hybrid Battery Depot. They were very nice about it. And um, without even getting the other one back, they shipped me another one. And I'm going to show you that one here in a second. Okay, sorry, it's a little darker in here in my garage. This is the second Hybrid Battery Depot battery that was sent in another reusable shipping container. It had um, two zip ties on it in shipping, but um, actually both zip ties were broken when it arrived via FedEx. Um, the bottom vent was distorted, um, but I, you can see I've bent it mostly back. And I'm going to do a little more bending and test fit the ductwork on it. But overall, I mean, a lot of the tabs were bent, um, but it doesn't appear to be distorted and should be able to be mounted with a little effort of stretching and bending. Um, so I guess my overall opinion is you know, if you're going to get a remanufactured battery or if you're going to order a battery shipped to you, you want to make sure that it's actually mounted probably on a, a, a pallet would be my guess with some type of blocks where it's actually bolted down in the position it would be in in the Prius uh, with enough clearance for that vent work to stay intact. Um, and I, I saw some, I think, I think uh, Reinvolt out of Sanford, North Carolina had some information on their site about making sure that you did bolt it down when you ship back your battery to be manufactured. I, I think they require the core come in first. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming they probably do the same thing when they ship it back to you. Okay, I've got the remanufactured hybrid battery in place in my Gen 2 Prius. Um, I've connected the wiring harness, main wiring harness, um, to the battery. And then I've also reconnected the electronic wiring harness to the ECU and um, the remaining, remaining pieces that connect um, the battery to the main wiring harness. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail on how you do that. Um, just uh, suffice it to say that you need to make sure you have the service plug out. Otherwise, you've got it 200 volts and Lord only knows how many amps at your fingertips there. And um, so it can be a very dangerous proposition. I don't recommend doing this by yourself unless you're a qualified electrician and are familiar with wearing uh, very you know, protective clothing for high voltage and uh, know how to test using a multimeter for voltage or amperage on a battery um, and that you just be very careful 
when you are doing that. Um, so I, I don't advocate that. This is more of an instructional video of how to replace um, a hybrid battery in a Gen 2 Prius um, if you have the experience to do so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the service cover over the, the electronics on the battery and start um, reassembling to the point where I can connect the 12 volt auxiliary battery, which is over here, and have all of the wiring harness and sensors and everything in place and cooling system in place um, to where I can um, go ahead and um, test the battery. All right, thanks. Okay, well that was not as easy as taking the old battery out. Um, this uh, second hybrid battery was somewhat distorted uh, from shipping, getting bounced around. You know, the, the casing of this thing is an alloy, maybe tin or something, and if it's not securely uh, mounted to something when you're shipping it, it's going to get bent and distorted. And um, this one was not as bad as the first one. I was able to bolt it to the subframe of the car, but where I ran into trouble was on getting these panels back on. And I was very hard not to cross thread the bolts just because of the, it just didn't fit the same way. And I'm, uh, I'm going to have to, I think I still have one bolt that is cross threaded and one that's I couldn't get in. So um, it's just a service cover. So um, anyway, what I'm going to do is it's secure enough for right now. If it's secured down the battery and I've reinstalled all the duct work, cleaned the fan, and I've got the you know all these little relays back in place. The only thing left to do um, to energize the car is to um, reattach the negative battery cable on the battery over here, the auxiliary battery, and then install the service plug on the hybrid battery over here. So what I'm going to do before I reassemble all the trim pieces and the seating, the rear seating, I am going to reattach the negative ground on the, the auxiliary 12 volt battery and I'm going to install the service plug make sure everything's okay check it with the multimeter and um, then I'm going to energize the car and um, maybe take it for a quick spin just to make sure everything looks right before I reassemble all the interior so um, yeah I'd say that you know dismantling the interior of the car to get down to the hybrid battery is not that difficult um, there's just a lot of trim pieces but um, man uh, putting that hybrid battery back in was um, quite a, an effort and you have to be really careful not to cross thread bolts and to really secure that battery um, back in. Uh, it took me a lot longer than I expected so um, anyway I'm going to go ahead and reattach the negative battery cable um, install the service plug and um, we'll take it for a spin. See you in a minute. Okay I've reconnected the um, ground of the 12 volt auxiliary battery and I've installed the service plug so we're ready to crank up the car. I've got my assistant in the back the hatch open. Um, when I energize the car, she's going to make sure that um, there are no sparks or smoke or anything before I take it for a quick spin. Okay, I'm going to energize the car. Appears to be starting up normally. I do see check engine lights, ABS, VSC, and so on. Um, I'm going to try driving. I don't see the um, engine cranking up. Are there any sparks or smoke back there, Ellen? No. Okay. All right. So, don't appear to have power, but um, I'm going to go ahead and try putting it into gear. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and get around from the back. So I'm going to put it in reverse. Can we close this? No. You can leave it open. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to take the brake off and um, put it in reverse. See if I can back up. Nope, definitely don't have anything. Put it in the park and I'm going to power down. Okay, the car does not appear to be powering down, but all of the warning lights are gone and the engine just cranked up. It does appear to be running a little rough. I'm going to put it into reverse. It does engage into reverse and I'm able to back up. The engine is running rough. Um, I'm wondering if maybe there's something with the ECU synchronizing with the electric drivetrain. It does appear to be running less rough now in drive. I'm going to put it in reverse again. Let's see how we do in reverse. Does appear to operating normal, be operating normally in reverse now as well. Okay, um, looks like we're ready for a spin. 
I'm going to go ahead and try shutting down, putting it into park. It does go into park and pushing the power off. It does successfully completely power down. So, so far so good. It does look like the hybrid battery is communicating with the ECU. The car does have power. It is able to um, energize the or be able to start the internal combustion engine and go into gear, both reverse and drive. And um, I'll check engine lights are off. So the cycle was I powered it on and there were check engine lights. Um, it appears to not um, engage the internal combustion engine. Uh, it appears to be just with all the check engine lights on, nothing happening. Um, once, and I was not able to put it into gear. Um, when I hit the power button a second time, all the check engine lights went away and the um, internal combustion engine started and I was able to move the car. It ran a little rough, but um, then after a few seconds, um, it did smooth out and it appears to be running normally. Okay, well, I'm going to take it for a spin now. So that's kind of the experience I had after starting up on a remanufactured battery. Um, I'll be back in a little bit to wrap this up. Thanks a lot. Okay, I got all the trim pieces back in place. Um, this is after I drove the car uh, for about 40 miles with the new remanufactured battery. Um, last you saw in the video, I would energized the car, started up, and there were some um, issues where it wouldn't charge at first. I pushed the button again, and uh, then it seemed to start initializing. Um, and then I shut it down, started it up again, and then I took it for a spin. I drove it at probably about seven miles up to a fuel station and put gas in. And um, I turned around, I drove probably another 16 miles and uh, went to um, a restaurant, Jimmy John's, and parked and turned it off, got a sandwich, went back out. When I turned it back on, uh, I got the dash lighting up with um, all the, like a Christmas tree with the uh, red triangle check engine uh, brake light and VSC so I was um, very disappointed but anyway I figured I'd drive it home figure out what's going on and um, got about halfway home was at a stop sign stoplight and um, tried to accelerate and nothing happened uh, and so then I was able to coast over into off the road and um, when I parked it I, I figured I'd pop open the back and um, uh, pull out the service plug so I pulled out the service plug and I reseated it really well again. I'd done that before though. And uh, when I turned it on, um, I still had just the red triangle with the exclamation point and a check engine light. But the other lights were not on. So then I drove it home, was able to drive it, didn't have any more problems with acceleration. Um, and then I got in the driveway and then I reset the codes with the OBD2 CAN scanner. And um, then I drove it another 20 miles, stopping and starting maybe four or five times, and I um, haven't noticed any issues. So um, I've reassembled all the trim. This was pretty straightforward. It was just a reverse of what I showed you before. Um, you know, I've put the side panels on first, then I put the cover over the um, battery, and then I reassembled, uh, put the tray in and the side trays, covers, and uh, then the main cover in the back, and then the trim piece along the back. And um, the, the seats were a little trickier, and it was just because I didn't realize which way the little brackets went for the seats. Um, when you lay the seats down, the best thing to do is to lay them flat, so like, like it's, you're going to be in the cargo position, and then turn the uh, little hinge brackets around to where there's a little metal tab that bends down. That should be facing down into the seat. So if you do it that way, then it's very straightforward. You know, you just balance the seat and, and, and tighten the bolts. Um, one thing I did notice, you'll see there is a, a um, center seat belt. If you get the seat turned around, uh, then that'll be twisted. I did notice that when I assembled it, that it was twisted. So then I just unbolted the seat and then just flipped it around 360 degrees and that untwisted that seat. So that was the only thing tricky. Other than that, everything just popped back in. And um, I think we're ready to go. I'm going to be driving it this week myself before I give it back to my wife just to make sure everything is okay and I don't see any more check engine lights. All right, I hope this uh, video was helpful. And um, I do recommend that if you do the remanufactured batteries, um, that you, or even if you do a new battery, um, when you replace it, do clean out that blower motor fan. Um, it, it does appear to be, get lit. And I, and I think that probably does contribute to not getting enough airflow. Um, just based on what I saw in this one. So I'm um, going to be testing these remanufactured batteries 
got a 12 month warranty. Um, gonna try to do some more research to find out if they actually put new battery cells in or if they just um, put um, used cells. So um, be anxious to see how, how well this works out. All right, thanks a lot, bye.